hey guys what's up uh, how's everyone how's everything going uh, welcome to the session uh, okay uh, so welcome to the session on uh, three step protocol for uh, car or one out um, uh, just con let me just uh, before we begin let me just confirm whether uh, the session the audio audible audio like the audio visual is going uh, all right or not okay anyway so yeah so yeah so i think i think the audio audio visual is working fine okay so guys uh, the three step protocol for cat or one out yes uh, or one out questions have been a part of uh, cat since quite some time now and uh, you know they they are quite similar uh, to para jumble questions right but but not not but not exactly similar of course so so uh, a typical or one out question for a typical or one out question you know uh, the the uh instructions go something like uh, uh five sentences uh, have been given uh, have been provided to you out of these five sentences uh, four of them when put together in the right sequence make sense uh, uh, make a coherent paragraph uh find out the one which does not fit in the other, which fit in with the other four okay so that's how uh, that's the instruction for these questions so basically you have a set of five sentences uh which are uh, four of which right uh, which when put together properly will make a paragraph one will, will not and you're supposed to find out the odd one out and hence the word odd one out okay so the uh, guys uh, the the idea today the agenda today is uh, very straightforward uh I'll, I'll be sharing with you what exactly the three what are the three steps i want you to be uh, uh and uh, undertaking what i think if you undertake you will be able to solve these questions very easily uh, but before I sh I talk about that, I, 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 I want you, I want to draw your attention towards how exactly these, uh, you know, uh, it help, it would help uh, if you, if you, if we knew how exactly these odd one out questions are created. Okay. So the first step is obviously is always that uh, uh, for anyone who's creating an odd one out question would uh, he would take an uh, extract, right? They would take an extract from uh, some source. It could be an article, it could be a book, it could be an essay, anything, right? Uh, with, with sufficiently, uh, you know, uh, sophisticated language, uh, the language would not be very straightforward. The language, like the more sophisticated the language, the more difficult the order out can be, the question can be, right? So for example, I've taken an extract here from uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's work, uh, Sherlock Holmes, right? They'll take an extract. The next step is they will, uh, divide that like they'll take they'll pick they'll pick two parts of the extract one will be uh you know the the, the, the uh, one will one part of the extract will be such, such that it has four sentences for example i've taken two pick pick two parts of this extract here one is uh, in blue the other you can see it is in green right uh the one in blue uh it can actually be broken down into if you see it is it is made up of four sentences the one start the first one starts from sherlock holmes goes on till uh, uh you know uh, from its neat baroque case right the second uh, sentences with his long and the white nervous fingers goes on till shirt cuff and so on and so forth so those, there are four sentences here which are right next to each other right they are in perfect logical continuation right so and and uh, and one another sentence will be picked up probably from the same extract from the see it's, it's part of the same extract right four sentences have been picked up which are which are which go together one after the other and one sentence will be picked up like after skipping a part of the paragraph right so that it will not necessarily make perfect logical sense if put up with these four sentences right so so basically you have you have five sentences out of which four of them are go together and one of them did, does not go together but is still part of the same paragraph right so so that it will not be very obvious for the student for the for the aspirant to to know that to 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 know that this one stands out right so and then then these are bro this th these will be these blue and green parts are broken up into sentences right like this broken up into, broken up into, into into sentences and then jumbled up and then jumble up and then, and then they are jumbled up right correct so once they are and and and, and there you go uh, you have your odd one out sentence here right this, this, this is your typical odd one out questions many a times what will what the uh, question setter will also do is many as many times what they will also do is they might just get rid of some parts of the sentences for example he might get rid of the word finally from here they might he might get rid of the word for some like, like some words which which don't really uh, uh, you know 
which don't really change the uh, getting rid of like such so that getting rid of those words words won't really change the meaning of the sentence but it will definitely increase the difficulty level it will definitely increase the difficulty level because these words might have helped you to link these sentences together right uh, and, and th there are actual cases you know with actual cat questions in fact uh, there was one with uh, in cat 2018 uh, right so 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 that's how a typical para uh, sorry not para uh, an odd one out question is uh, made up generally okay now this odd like like uh, this this question for example this odd sentence that they make might not necessarily always be from the same paragraph okay they might just make it up uh, or they might take it from some other uh, related paragraph but 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 uh, if if they had to make it really difficult it would more often than not be from the same extract so that it becomes difficult for the learner it becomes difficult for the student or for the candidate to differentiate it from uh, the rest of the uh, the other four sentences that go together because it comes from the same article right it comes from the same essay so 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 that's 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 how it works okay now now that we know how an odd one out question is made let's have a look at let's have a look at uh, you know what exactly uh, let's have a look at uh, what, what, what usually is the approach of uh, of, of people uh, like how do students usually approach uh, the odd one out question okay so you have been you, you're you're provided with an initial set of sentences a b c d e and uh, so when and you're asked to find the which one is the odd one out right and now what happens here is most of the aspirants and most of the students they are always focused they are they're totally focused on the misfit they always the, the the thought process is always about okay which one is not gonna fit here right okay which one is like which one stands out too much right they totally focused on the best fit and uh, in many cases there is no I, I wouldn't say always but but in many scenarios in many cases they don't really have a very uh, thought out strategy a very well thought of uh, thought out strategy right and then sometimes a very generic advice that you hear from uh, many people is that uh, you should try to solve odd one out questions like para jumbles. Uh, which is partly helpful and partly it is not right because well odd one out questions aren't para jumbles right so though you don't have to solve them like para jumbles but yeah there is there is there are some parts of solving this type of question which are similar to uh, what would uh, entail uh, solving a para jumble okay so so this is the usual approach you have the initial set and you keep looking for the misfit right uh, what should be what uh, what should be the, the recommended approach the recommended approach according to me in my opinion is this you should focus even more on connecting the other expressions okay so you have to keep an eye out for the misfit but you should also focus more on connecting the other expressions okay at the same time try to keep an eye out for any option that clearly stands out right these things these two things need to happen parallelly okay these two things things need to happen parallelly need need not get the whole and, and moreover, moreover, you, you need not get the whole sequence right. You just need to look for pairs for elimination. Okay. For example, you have five. Let's say you have five sentences here. Okay. Uh, let's say you have five sentences here, and uh, uh, let's say let's say the correct sequence of this and like uh, uh, B is the odd one out. You don't know yet. You don't know that yet. And let's say it's the it's B that is the odd one out. Okay. So and you go across these sentences and you you come to know you 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 somehow realize that C and A would make a perfect pair, like like uh, A should definitely follow C, right? Then maybe there is some content in these. Maybe there is a pronoun in A that refers back to an antecedent in C. Maybe there are there is some some commonality in topics. Okay, maybe there is a logic that uh, connects them very strongly, right? So that C and A definitely go together. In that case, if you, if you're really sure, you can clearly eliminate C and A from your choices right you can clearly eliminate C and A from your choices because well if they go together they have to be part of the coherent set by the way guys uh, out of the initial set when you take the misfit out whatever is remaining I call it the the coherent set because these four sentences uh, the remaining four sentences when put together will, will, will make some uh, coherent paragraph right so I call them the coherent set so 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 if C and A go together really well, 
like uh, they totally fit in together that means they must be part of the coherent set because there can be only one misfit there cannot be two misfits right and that's why you can clearly eliminate c and a okay then let's see then you're left with b let's say b uh, d and e right and you again observe that okay d and e also make a very strong link okay e should definitely follow d in that case what do you do in that again the same scenario you can you, you can obviously again eliminate d and e as well okay next now you're left with only b and that has to be your answer right so, so basically you have arrived at your answer by elimination elimination not selection huh? mind you elimination now guys uh did we solve it like para jumbles uh yes to an extent but no why yes because we did we, we, we didn't look for links between c and a and d and e no because we stopped we did not really go on to find the correct sequence among these three right and the, you you still could have had two possibilities here of of having the right sequence of these sentences They're like one could have been c a d e the other could have could have been d e c a right but you did not waste your time there because it's not a parageable question you don't need to answer the give the right sequence as, a, as an answer right and that's why you didn't do that okay you, you stopped short of it you stopped short of it and that's how your approach sh should be different from a parageable question okay although as i as i already said some aspects of the approach will be similar okay like finding the links okay so, so this is the recommended approach that you should not be just looking for the misfit you should also be focused on finding which sentences go together which pairs go together and putting them together and like uh, eliminating them okay so now uh, so we have talked about the recommended approach uh, the two essential tools that will help you that will help you to get so basically see, see essentially the advice that i'm giving you is don't just keep focusing on the misfit also focus on the on forming the coherent set and eventually you'll get to the misfit now how to find the coherent set from the initial set how do you do that there are two i there are two there are two basically c's I'll, I'll call it let me call them two c's there are two c's uh, which will help you which will always help you to find the core uh, coherent set from the initial set the first c is your context okay whenever you're reading each and every sentence when you read each uh, the sentences these five sentences while reading each and every sentence uh, you, sh you should try to be mindful of you should take a mental note of what exactly was the topic was the most important topic in that particular sentence okay maybe maybe that's say the passage about second world war maybe the passage uh, uh, the first sentence talks about uh, the immediate cause of second world war the second talks about uh, uh, I don't know let's say uh, uh, the commonalities between first world war and second world war right uh, in the causes so so this so, so you should you, your mental note in this case would be second world war cause immediate cause first world war commonalities like like you, you need to have these very tiny mental loads right you don't have to write them down you just need to have these mental loads about these and whenever you find that there is there is some connection between the uh, uh, the topics that you've noted for each for any two sentences or, or there is some very strong commonality or connection in that case you can you can try to uh, maybe maybe check if these two sentences would go together in any way right uh, so so note the core subject of each option observe if a majority of options stick to a uh, sorry there's a typo here guys excuse that it's a stick to a subject or a set of subjects and club sentences accordingly so the first c is context the next c is guys connections connections are basically uh, so so uh, so i i and i've taken in many of my classes on an academy uh, i've talked about this lpact toolkit that we use for solving para jumbles lpact is basically just a acronym for l is for logical flow p is for pronouns first a is for uh, articles second a is for uh, ac uh, your abbreviations or acronyms c is for connection uh, connectives or conjunctions and t is for timeline so these are the type of clues that help you to uh, stitch these sentences together right so and it is, it's very useful in para jumbles and also in uh, or one out question because in this case also you're looking at forming uh what do you say perf uh, paragraphs right so w one way that in which you can do this is uh by, by in which you can get a current group out of your initial set is by checking for context the other is by checking for connections right if there's a pronoun in a that refers back to an antecedent in c that could be a clue if there's a uh, i don't know a, a conjunction in uh, d that that uh, totally makes sense with uh, what has been said in the way the or sentence a ends that could be your clue again right so two c's one is context the other is connections okay but guys you have to be careful about uh, using connections because in many times as i already said uh, towards the uh, while while telling you telling you about how a, how an odd one out question is made sometimes many times uh, 
the the paper setter would would uh, get rid of these connections deliberately get rid of these connections to make the sentence even more difficult and and we've already observed uh, maybe maybe if i if you have time in the, in some of the other sessions I'll, I'll share with you that particular question in which it was done okay so all right so so that's the the other two two tools right so finally the three steps right three steps that, we, that i talked about at the very start of the session right uh, what's the slide yeah three step protocol three step protocol that i talked about uh, at the very start uh, yeah so wait a second uh, the three step i talked about at the very start here we go this is the protocol okay these these are the three steps that i expect you guys to uh, employ when solving an order not questions the first step and there is 20 percent of your work is uh, obtaining a sense of the paragraph obtaining a sense of the paragraph okay uh, the second step is uh, the second step is uh, would be sorry <coughs> excuse me the second step would be uh, the first step would be obtaining a sense of the paragraph the second step involves two things that you need to do parallelly one is identify pairs using LPAC clues and content and context basically try to identify these pairs try to identify these pairs uh, like uh, the sentences which go together either by using the context or by using the connections when you use connections you'll be using LPAC clues right uh, as I said logical flow pronoun uh, abbreviations articles connect conjunctions and timeline right either you use the connections uh, uh, right or the context to identify pairs that go together and if you keep doing this you'll be you'll eventually arrive at your answer by elimination because you will have eliminated all those sentences that could not be the odd one out at the same time while doing this you have to look out for options that stand out very conspicuously okay that stand out very conspicuously you might not be able to see this part guys uh, because uh, because of my image here but uh, this basically just says uh, the coherent set right the four options that uh, would that the four sentences that, that when when they go together they make uh, complete sense okay so all right so so, so either you'll uh, arrive at your answer by elimination by doing this or you have to constantly look out for options that stand out conspicuously now if there's an option that uh, that is uh, you know that that's almost uh, you know like it's almost like it's shouting out aloud that uh, yeah this is the odd one out and you're really sure about it you can just get your give your answer by selection right but even in that case i would definitely recommend that you uh, try you, you try to make sure because our elimination is always safer it will always uh, get your accuracy rates up selection can be a little risky okay so these are the three steps obtain a sense of the paragraph uh, then identify the pairs by using context or content at the same time look out for options that stand out uh, conspicuously and finally arrive at your answer by either elimination or selection based on which one of these two worked out for you okay and uh, yeah so, so that's about the protocol now now if we if we wanted to let's let's uh, let me just wait a second we can we can have we can go through a couple of applications uh, here wait a second let me see which one is which one can be most relevant and most helpful for you uh, in many ways translators displacement okay uh, let's let, let's look at the first one itself let's look at this one so this is a question uh, which was i think uh, part of uh, one of <coughs> cat quiz just a second wait a second or maybe probably we can use uh, let's look at a more recent question let me look at uh, get a more recent question for you yeah this would be apt i think this would be apt so uh, yeah so Look at the let's so there are these five sentences and we are supposed to find out which one is the misfit right and uh, let's let's use uh, the steps so so we'll try to obtain a sense of the paragraph at the same time we'll keep noting uh, if there are any clues and uh, topics that stitch any couple of any few few sentences together right uh, we'll keep doing that so our, let's let's go through these uh, <coughs> sorry these sentences okay now uh, wait a second I'll also use a pen here so that I can point out yeah that works okay so the first uh, sentence it says that uh, our smartphones can now our smartphones can now uh, smartphones can now 
track our diets, our biological cycles, or even our digestive systems and sleep patterns. Okay, so maybe my I'll just take a mental note that okay, it's uh, it says talks something about how smartphones can track a lot of stuff, including biological cycles, sleep patterns, etc., etc., etc. So the key points for me here would be smartphones and tracking. Uh, uh, all uh, uh, things related to our body, like our body cycles or biological cycles. Fair enough. We'll move on to the next one. Researchers have uh, even coined a new term, orthosomnia, to describe the insomnia brought on by paying too much attention to smartphones and sleep tracking apps. Now, suddenly, researchers is, is something new that has come in right here. Right? There was no mention of researchers here. So it has changed the, it has altered the context a little bit, but at the same time, you also have. And then um, there's also a new context, uh, new content about insomnia that has been brought in here. But what has also stayed here, uh, stayed uh, consistent here in this uh, sentence with respect to this one is the smartphones bit, right? And the sleep tracking apps bit, right? So this sentence also talked about smartphones and uh, sleep patterns and tracking biological cycles. While this also talks about sleep tracking, uh, smartphones and sleep tracking apps. And what has, what is new here? What is new here? Let me just uh, see. Uh, the points that have that are new here are researchers, this researchers bit, uh, and uh, like insomnia bit, right? These things are new. All right, so let's uh, look at the other sentence. Sleep, nature's soft nurse, is a blissful, untroubled state, all too easily disturbed by earthly worries or a guilty conscience. Okay, all right. Uh, no mention of smartphones. No mention of sleep tracking apps only mention of sleep right so so, so what what do we have new here we have sleep new here we have i don't know some other topics like uh, uh, earthly worries and uh, guilty conscience and natures like like the context has quite quite changed right nature's softness so, so it, 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 it if it happens to be a part of the paragraph it will have broadened the uh, the, the the context of this whole passage quite a bit right so, but but there is a chance there might be some connection. It might be connected by by the like we still have two sentences to go, right? So let's let's have a look at that. So now the existence of a market for such apps. So guys, this is a very important link. Okay, this like such apps is is is, is this is really important because and especially the mention of such apps that means it is referring to maybe the sleep tracking apps here. Okay, is unsurprising. Shift work, long hours, culture, and a blue light from screens have conspired to rob us, rob many of us. Of sufficient rest rob of sufficient rest refers back to the insomnia that, I, that we talked about here right so I'll probably that's why I, I so that's so because this insomnia is not uncommon it's it's here it's, it's present in the sentence as well that's why I'm remarking these this as uh, it has yellow okay I'm letting the red ones be only things that do not match or not have are not common in other sentences so the insomnia is common in this sentence as well so I've remarked it as yellow market for such apps and apps is there right app yeah it's here as well as here so next let's let's look at this a new threat to a good night's rest has emerged so again we are we are we are quite concerned about good night's rest right and a threat has emerged uh, which is smartphones with sleep tracking apps right so guys as i said uh, as i said earlier so so we, what we what did we uh, talk about earlier we, we talked about the two c's right we talked about the two C's here. Let me just take you there. Yeah, we talked about the two C's that you can employ. Two C's that you can employ, context and connections uh, that you can employ to get the coherent set from the initial set, right? So what what C's have we we, we have mainly used the context, right? And when uh, a little bit of connections. Let me just uh, take you back to the slide we are solving. Uh, wait a second. The uh, uh, smartphones, right? This is this was the one. Uh -huh. Okay, so 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 we have been this this uh, question is says that it it may like using context here has been quite helpful, right? It, uh, the, it, it has been the has been key here. So if you see, this talks about smartphones, sleep patterns, biological cycles, insomnia, smartphones, sleep tracking apps. Uh, researchers is something that is only in this sentence, and then you have this sentence. Uh, talks about again such apps and there is this reference this, this is the connection part this is the connection part by the way so right and uh, is unsurprising shift work long hours culture blue light etc etc robust many of sufficient rest again insomnia related to insomnia good night's rest right consistent theme smartphones sleep tracking apps so so you can you can quite clearly see that 
only except for this one sentence except for this one sentence which uh, clearly which clearly is talking about something totally different like okay that sleep is probably one common aspect but it's this 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 just takes uh, the conversation in a very different direction right it just takes the conversation in a very different direction and hence it's quite probable that this sentence is actually this sentence is actually the organ out right it is uh, extremely probable for you to say and i'll just uh, get a pen so this would most probably be the odd one out your excuse my handwriting uh, the odd one out the triple o's are for odd one out okay so yeah so so that should be your answer okay let me rather erase this it looks a little too ugly anyways so uh, yeah so let's look at the answer and there you go right so as we had as we had solved the coherent sets are uh 1 2 3 and 1 2 4 and 5 are make up the coherent set in this order so 5 goes first then you have 1 then you have 2 then you have 4 now guys again as we discussed you don't always have to solve the whole question you don't have to uh, you know uh, go and find the correct sequence in every case in some scenarios where you where you might be really confused you might want to uh, try and attempt but not always right for example in this scenario like uh, just noting the context right there was so so much of uh, concurrence in the context of the other sentence of these four sentences it was not really necessary for you to go and find out uh, to find in what what would be the, what would be the correct order to put these sentences in right you, you just got your answer just by just like this right so that's that's how uh, i think guys uh, if you attempt these questions it will be quite helpful to you and uh, okay so uh, and that's that's a three step protocol okay that's a three step protocol for you uh, obtain a sense of the paragraph and while doing this you have to identify the context and, and the connections at the same time look out for options that stand out conspicuously and either arrive at your answer by elimination or by selection right so yeah so that's from my side uh, if there's any questions or queries i can definitely take any questions i, I still have a couple of minutes remaining before we stop the session and uh, that's it Okay, I'll just I'll just uh, leave the slide here uh, on this uh, or and, and uh, if there's any questions remaining, anything at all, please feel free to uh, tell me in the live. Alpac clues. Uh, Nitya Anand says Alpac clues. Nitya, did you understand uh, Alpac clues? Uh, what what they were? Alpac clues are basically L is for logic. Uh, 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 what I'll do, is, guys, is I'll probably also share uh, the link to this Alpac clues. Uh, courses on an academy which which uh, so you can you can go and uh, look at that you can find that out okay l packed so where l stands for logical uh, flow p stands uh, stands for uh, your uh, pronoun the first a stands for articles the second a stands for stands for abbreviations the c stands for conjunctions and t stands for timeline so basically these are the types of these are the clues which help you stitch these sentences together stitch this stitch these sentences together okay that's what that was nitya's question yeah so uh, we're done with this uh, and uh, thanks ton uh, everyone uh, it was uh, good to have you guys here and i hope there was some at least at least tiny bit of value added here okay uh, all right guys thank you so much and i'll uh, <coughs> i'll see you later okay and uh, right uh, wait a second All right. Okay. So, all right, guys. Uh, thanks a ton, and uh, I'm gonna. I'll see you in the next class.